Good morning to everybody. I'm Dom DeMeo with the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance. I wanted to welcome you to our um, proclamation where we're ending economic development week. Um, paradise. So before I get started, I did want to recognize um, a few a few of our friends uh, that are um, either in the audience or supporting our small businesses every day, our co community partners. So to both the Manatee and Sarasota County governments, uh, Manatee Sarasota Builder, Building Industry Association, Bradenton Area EDC, the EDC of Sarasota, the Greater Sarasota Chamber of Commerce, Gulf Coast Builders Exchange, Longboat Key Chamber, Manatee Chamber, the Realtor Association of Sarasota Manatee, and Visit Sarasota. I am sure I could name about 20 more organizations, but a big thank you to our community partners as they advocate for our future advocate for our community and advocate for our small businesses. Working together, we can continue to experience growth in our future. I also wanted to give a big thank you for the assistance today with today's event. John Holtz uh, from Plunkett Research Architects uh, and also the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance Economic Development Chair, Dave Sessions and Dave Otterness, both executives with Willa Smith, uh, making things happen and you'll see it today and Jeffrey Kinn, acting CEO at the Player Center for Performing Arts, who makes things happen almost every day. Um, and rounding out the, um, the day, we'll see a video, so please don't leave if you can stay till the end. Please don't leave. Tom Johnson of Lakewood Ranch Commercial Real Estate will be on um, accepting a virtual award, um, celebrating, uh, as we are today, a Waterside Place. So... Uh, I, I couldn't do what we do every day without our annual sponsors. So a big thank you to our annual sponsors. Normally I read them off. You saw them scrolling as you entered uh, the room, quote unquote. Uh, so I'll, I'll give, I won't give the time today other than to say thank you for what they do. We wouldn't be able to do the programming we've done over the last few months for sure without the support of our annual sponsors. So why are we here today? The 2020 Economic Development Week started on Monday and ends tomorrow. Um, for us, it ends on a business week. So today being Friday, um, we're celebrating it. It was created in 2016 with the goal to increase awareness for uh, local programs that create job, advanced career development, and increase the quality of life within a community. Uh, the Economic Development Week is, is celebrated both in large and small communities. We believe we're one of those large communities that needs to highlight what's going on in our community. Our economic development team, our committee, decided that uh, Waterside Place is the, the place to be celebrating this year, and that's why we're here this morning. Uh, we're here to celebrate Schroeder Manatee Ranch, um, should be known you know, to everybody as Schroeder Manatee Ranch or SMR, and their continued investment in the Lakewood Ranch, our community. Um, as everyone um, knows, but if you don't, SMR remains our primary economic engine within the ranch. And if it wasn't for its brands, Lakewood Ranch Community and Lakewood Ranch Commercial, I don't think we would be where we're at today. Um, the ranch is a master plan, over 50 square miles, filled with shopping, dining, arts, entertainment, nature, and recreation. But to, more, to most, it's more than that, it's home. It's home to many family, families and many businesses. You know, to date, SMR, has assisted with over six million dollars, six million square feet of buildable space or built space, um, and encompasses over thirteen hundred businesses and almost sixteen thousand employees. So when you look at what the opportunity is, which is almost one hundred and fifty percent more in growth on the commercial side, it's uh, it, we should be here celebrating. Um, their purposeful vision put us where we're at today and made it. Uh, and we'll make it the future. So what is the future? You know, some of the things that we see growing within the ranch that are new and, and bold, the Brain Health Initiative, a pioneering group that's gonna lead research in, our, in, our, in, in the brain study within the ranch and you know, for years to come. Uh, the core area, continuing to strive for excellence in a research development in, and with the infrastructures and amenities already in place. And we'll talk today a little bit more about Waterside Place. I'll leave the explanation to the experts following me today. Um, you know, and I think you'll I think you'll enjoy what they have in line for you as well. You know, we live and we work in a special place. 
you know, we're also here to celebrate, uh, as I said, SMR. I wanted to give a big thank you to them for their wonderful investment and pass, and pass my positive regards on the Rex and the whole SMR Lakewood Ranch team. They perform every day so that we can live and work in paradise. So as Jeffrey Ken would say, on with the show. And here I'd like to introduce John Holtz, uh, our Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance Economic Development Chair, so he can kick us off for the event today. Thank you for coming and look for, I hope you look forward to the presentation. Thank you, Dom, and welcome everybody. Um, over 100 strong. A thank you to our, our membership for making us so strong. Um, and on behalf of the more than 20 member Economic Development Committee, um, we're thrilled to be here today to put on this wonderful program. Um, back in 1891, a guy by the name of Daniel Burnham, a renowned Ch Chicago architect and planner, he said, make no little plans. They have no magic to stir one's blood and probably themselves will not be realized. So as Dom mentioned, SMR and this wonderful place called Lakewood Ranch, they never said it would happen. They said nobody would build on that side of the freeway. And I happen to live in one of the third or fifth or seventh houses on the other side of that freeway. And look at us now on our way to 50,000 people in just a few more years. So we are making big plans and we have made big plans. And today, we are going to hear from three accomplished leaders like modern day Daniel Burnham's making no little plans. In fact, making a huge economic impact on infrastructure, building construction, jobs and quality of life. Let's now put on our hard hats and take a listen to our first presenter. Let's listen to Dave Sessions, President and CEO of Willis Smith Construction. Take it away, Dave. Thanks, John. See if I can get the screen up here. There we go. Can everybody see that? Can you hear me? Oh, good. All right. So I think first, I, I just want to start out uh, to add on to uh, Dom and, and John's comments about um, the kind of the economic development aspect um, of of Lakewood Ranch. And, and I wanna start by saying a special thank you to Rex Jensen and to Kirk Boylston uh, for recognizing that true economic development is about hiring local firms. And of course they hired our firm to construct Waterside Place. And just a quick overview, uh, the Waterside community is Lakewood Ranch's newest village and it's actually the first in Sarasota County. It consists of over 5,000 new homes when, it, when it's built out. There are seven very large lakes that actually have more than 20 miles of shoreline. There's hundreds of acres of nature preserves. And this is going to, the center of, of this new community is uh, really the, the lakefront town center, which is called Waterside Place. And this is just a a rendering um, of ultimately what the community is going to look like when it is built out. So let me just give you a few facts and figures about the town center known as Waterside Place. I think that the first thing is um, that this should be completed and, and starting to open right around a year from now. There's 138,000 square feet of retail, and, and office space. Um, this is going to become the number one destination in Sarasota and Manatee County when it comes to entertainment and going out to eat. Uh, there isn't anything in this community like it, and it's just going to be absolutely spectacular to come to this town center and have just a, a, a huge selection of, of places to. Uh, to, to enjoy uh, going out to eat with family. Uh, it consists of plazas, there's gonna be a marina, um, there's an eight acre waterfront park, which is gonna be used for festivals, uh, markets, and recreation. There's a children's exploration park and a bike club. Uh, the place is loaded with sidewalk cafes and second floor office space, and all with views of the lake. Uh, there's gonna be neighborhood shops and services. Um, so the spot called Merchants Plaza, 
there's an event pavilion uh, right out with, uh, on the point with views of what is called Kingfisher Lake. Um, this is going to be centered when it comes to entertainment by the Player Center for Performing Arts, and, and we're, we're going to hear from Jeffrey King Kin in a moment. And this is surrounded by 1,400 residential units where people can just simply walk uh, to the town center. And I think just a simple fun fact, uh, the, the Waterside Lake uh, was actually for many years a, a shell or a sand quarry, and uh, the, the average depth is about 20 feet. Uh, the lake is about 280 acres, and it has almost 2 billion gallons of, of water. Um, so there's your fun fact. Now let's get into the details of, of the town center. Uh, these are a few of the tenants that have signed up uh, and, and will be under construction shortly, uh, consisting of um, the Yoga Shack, which is going to be a, a studio uh, for yoga. Uh, you've got Foundation Coffee, um, Kilwins, which is basically an ice cream and chocolate shop, uh, So Fresh, which is basically made to order bowls, wraps, and salads, uh, along with homemade juices and smoothies. Uh, um, there's the Paint Nail Bar. Uh, there's a family law practice. Uh, there's a Tria, which is a local cafe for breakfast and lunch. Uh, Crop, which is a vegan and organic and gluten free restaurant. Uh, you've got Derek the Stallone, and you've got Corey, which is an Asian restaurant, uh, which is actually being, uh, is, is owned by the, the folks that own Japan. So this is just a few of the things that we can begin to expect, and there's going to be a lot more tenants coming down the road. Here is an overview of really what the town center looks like, and, and the, uh, the kind of the, the very deep Blue is, is where all the restaurants and, and retail are going to be. Uh, you can see to the left, the, the green space that's out on the peninsula is, is the island park where, where different uh, events uh, and recreation will be held. And I think I've got a, a here's a, a little larger a blow up uh, of the park. Uh, there's a pavilion, uh, volleyball courts, uh, nature trail. Um, so it, this, this park is going to be absolutely spectacular. Uh, a real good complement to, to the dining and the entertaining, entertainment aspects. So now I thought we would just kind of walk through where are we today. And so as you drive down Deer Drive uh, and you reach the corner, you are greeted basically by the, the, the sign that says, coming soon. And then I thought I'd just walk through a, a couple of status photos for construction. So. This was taken in May of, of 2019, and this is really when the true groundbreaking started. And then I wanna jump forward to October because the, the first five months, this project was heavily under construction, e even though it may not look like it, uh, all the things that the average person doesn't really think about, but takes for granted, uh, basically went under the ground. You know, you wanna turn the lights on, so you've got underground power, you need to flush the toilets. So all, all the, the water and the sewer and, and all the utilities basically went into place during those, those first uh, five months. And then we basically broke ground, starting with the buildings. You can see the buildings beginning to come out of the ground with the foundations in November. And then in December, uh, again, we're, we're moving along, we're progressing. Uh, we've got a progress going from one building to the next, uh, working with all the, the, the construction trades so that they've got a continual kind of pipeline of, of work. We see February and March, the, the buildings are really beginning to take shape. You can see along the, the lakefront, which is where uh, the, the four major restaurant buildings are, are going in, and those are starting to take shape. And then finally, this is the latest photo that we have taken uh, in April, where the buildings are starting to become topped out and you can really see the, the town center taking shape. And so this is from a slightly different viewpoint uh, where we have highlighted a few of the things. You, you can see the, the housing. Uh, so again, th these are apartments. And, and people who live in the apartments can, don't have to drive. They can basically just walk to the, the shops and, and the restaurants. 
to the left, you can see the Player Center uh, for Performing Arts, where, where that location is going to be. You can see that eight acre park. And it, kind of in the background, uh, I think one of the, the interesting features is that there is a proposed walking trail, uh, which is a 5K uh, trail, basically three and a half miles that goes completely around the lake. And then you've got uh, the future connector road that's going to start construction soon from Lakewood Ranch Boulevard to Lorraine Road, which is the, kind of that yellow line on the south. Um, let's talk about the economic impact. And uh, as I said, I wanted to say thank you to, to the folks at SMR for hiring our company. In turn, uh, you know, we believe true economic development is, is in terms of, of hiring local firms, uh, firms that are based in Sarasota and, and Manatee counties. And so just to go over a list of the few firms that are working on this project today, you know, Folly Bryan Architecture is, is doing the design. We have Stantec Engineering, which designed all the civil engineering and the site and you know, the water and the sewer that none of us think about, but, but take for granted. Uh, CNM Road Builders uh, is basically did the installation of all the utilities and the site work. Uh, Woodruff and Sons is working out there. Uh, GeoServe is basically doing all of the surveying, uh, all of the quality control and testing. Again, as a local firm called Universe, Universal Testing, uh, Service Contracting, D and D Garage Doors, Hollow Metal Specialists, uh, a I, I call it a, a Bradenton institution with commercial plastering, uh, one of the best uh, stucco and plastering firms that have been around for, for 40 years in this community, uh, along with commercial contracting, uh, you know, Mullets Aluminum, founded right here in Sarasota, uh, U.S. Awning, uh, and then McDonough Plumbing, Power Air Conditioning, and West Coast Electric are all local firms owned and operated in Sarasota or Manatee County. And you know, all of the employees that they have uh, live in this community uh, and are working here. Uh, so tr true economic development. Um, a couple other facts. Uh, again, 138,000 square feet of office and retail space. Uh, construction is taking about two years from, from start uh, to finish. Uh, during that time, we've averaged about 90 full-time jobs that are on site, but also in support of that, there's about another 90 jobs that have been created off-site just in management and, and producing the materials that are delivered. And I'm talking about these are, these are local jobs. Uh, right now, we have about 20 local companies working on site. One of the next phases is as the tenants begin to start, we're building the shell, and so the tenants are gonna come in and do their tenant improvements. There'll be another 30 or 40 different local businesses all doing those tenant build outs with, with, with the finishes. Um, I think ultimately when, when this project is completed and we are off site, it, it's a little difficult to project because we don't completely know the, 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 the makeup of what all the tenants are gonna be but it's pretty easy to estimate that there's going to be over 500 permanent jobs um, here just in the Waterside Town Center. Um, and and th that is just a huge economic driver. Um, next, the another large economic driver that is really going to be kind of the centerpiece for uh, Waterside Place is the you know the 90 year old Sarasota institution uh, with the, the players and you know the new player center of performing arts is is going to be located right here and I, I think with that um, I'm going to turn this over to to Jeffrey Ken who can tell us you know all about the players plans. Excellent thank you so much um, and thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, hello from the players. Uh, we're here. Um, we are working to reopen when it is safe. So uh, we were interrupted with our uh, 90th season. And I got to tell you, it was a banner season for us at the players. We were having one of our best seasons ever before we were uh, interrupted. So we're here working, planning on a great, bright future. 
Um, speaking of, I'm going to plug our one minute cancer benefit tonight at 730 that you can watch on Facebook. So we're doing things virtually just to stay active. Um, I'm going to pretend for just a second that maybe you all are unaware of the arts impact on this cultural coast. Um, the Arts Alliance did a impact study just a couple of years ago. Uh, arts, organiza or, arts organizations spend $295 million a year into our local economy. This is more than three times the national average uh, because there are so many arts groups and arts groups and organizations in town. Sarasota County alone has 7,445 arts related jobs. Arts attendees spend $93.5 million on food, parking, hotels, et cetera. We add $20 million to state governments and revenue. We paid about 12.4 million in local taxes. And there were over 2.4 million arts attendees to our local area arts and cultural events. It's an interesting side note that when we won the Chamber of Commerce uh, Arts uh, Business Award, uh, the Art Cultural Organization of the Year Award several years back, our platform was, you know, we're not just a community theater, we are an arts business. Uh, and we were very proud of that fact when we won that we were able to share that. Currently, the players, I, I like to say this, that who the players was uh, so many years ago, 1929, who the players is and who the players will be are really three completely different organizations. Currently, we have about 14 employees, several part-time employees, and then contract up to 45 employees. These are our uh, designers and musicians and, and directors and things like that. About a third of our budget is uh, in salaries. Uh, that's almost $700,000. We are lean and mean. Uh, lots of us wear several hats, uh, especially when it comes to our, our actual itself and then our school and our studio. Uh, the new players, um, the Waterside players is going to grow, we feel, at least by three once we are all open. So initially, we are going to open our main stage theater. So we'll end up being about a $4 million organization at first. And then once we're all up and running, we will be over a $5.5 million arts organization. Um, the staff grows, but also our ability to attract more patrons. So our current range of ticket buyers, we feel, is really all over the country, but within about 20 miles of our current location. But research, researchers showed that uh, our move to Lakewood Ranch and the Fruitville and 75 exit will expand our reach to over 60 miles, uh, including Tampa and Naples. Uh, the traffic off of I-75 uh, is, uh, uh, attractive to us. It's another reason why Moat Marine is moving where they are moving. So we are looking forward to the visibility of what Waterside will offer us, and it's also why we love it uh, so much. So uh, as a cultural center, our new pro forma and our organizational chart completely changes. Um, we would go from, for example, we currently have a team for marketing of one. Uh, that moves to the three uh, with three part-time. Our production team currently of five people and about 45 contracted employees would become uh, triple that almost, 20 full-time employees just in production alone and 70 contracted designers and directors and musicians, et cetera. Our facilities, we don't have a facilities. Uh, so uh, easily maintenance, custodial, security, nine new jobs. Development, we have one soldier right now uh, that would move to four. Finance, again, accounting, payroll, HR. Our school and our studio, we really have two main employees and four part-time instructors. This would jump to five full-time employees and 12 teachers and instructors. So the players team easily doubles once we move. And once that other spaces begin to open, what I keep saying is, you know, our first phase really is building the structure of our building, um, and that is about a 16 to $18 million affair. Then we go in and build the, uh, the main stage theater, and then over a series of years, we will open up our other spaces, our black box, our school and studio, and then our cabaret. We will be engaging 12 plus other arts groups, other organizations, 
um, we will have three performance spaces and those spaces can run uh, consecutively all the time. We will have spaces for events, for weddings, uh, for galas and rentals. So all these things will add to our bottom line and really enhance our relevance uh, in the community. Um, that figure for us, that uh, $93 million was spent by art attendees on hotels and, and flowers and all those great things. And that report that I'm talking about, um, it's a really nice, wonderful, beautiful uh, uh, report from the Arts Alliance. Uh, it doesn't lie and it's several years old. So we know that that probably has grown. And then once this current um, uh, sideline, this current issue is passed, we are planning to kick right back in. Uh, we have our 91st season planned for this year in this current space. Uh, we will be in a temporary space uh, after that until we can get building. I know Dave Sessions needs the work, so we want to make sure that we get, uh, we get our building up and running and start our growth as an arts center. Um, it really is a big difference between what we are now as the area's community theater. And we are proud of the fact that we are going bold and going big. Um, our current working model is okay. This one secures our space. It secures our, our need in the community to, for all these other arts groups that need a home. We are going to be a cultural center and we can't wait to get started. So of course, uh, we're looking for assistance from the community to make that happen. Obviously a large uh, 70,000 plus square foot building like the one I have behind me um, has lots of space and lots of rooms with lots of naming opportunities. So lots of great names of lots of great donors can uh, be a part of our organization. So as you think about the arts, we're not just here to entertain you, we are an arts business. And that business, as we've done the research over the last few years, is a big business. And we can't wait to get there and get started. So thanks from all of us at the Player Center. And thanks for having us. We appreciate the time. So thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, you know, I, I just, uh, I can't say enough about where we live and all the different partners that come together to put together what is economic development within our community. Um, as we uh, exit uh, a time of um, difficulty and enter uh, or re-enter what will be an energized growth, I believe you'll see that everyone comes together um, as a group, as a team, as a family, as a community to make sure we carry forward that, um, you know, what we've done in the past. So a couple things with the Alliance coming up. If you like to cook, we're going to have a cooking presentation next week. Uh, if you, if you want to hear from Senate President Gil, Bill Galvano, uh, Monday, May 18th at 11 a.m., Bill will give a state of the state and, and what has happened in our region as he's seen it as, a, as, a, as he exits his Senate president seat. And then on the 29th, um, your vote, your voice, the county uh, supervisors of elections from both counties will be on talking about uh, being safe to vote and how to do so and uh, what's going on in each one of the counties. So as we end, um, a thank you to SMR again for their wonderful investment at Waterside, to Dave Sessions and Dave Otterness with Willow Smith for your time today, to Jeffrey Kinn from the Players, to John Holtz and the whole Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance Economic Development Committee who helped us put this on today. And one final thank you for Tom, to Tom from Lakewood Ranch Commercial Realty as he takes us um, and as we exit the uh, presentation. So thank you for attending and uh, hope you enjoy the video. Hi guys, I'm Tom Johnson, leasing manager of Waterside Place, and this is Waterside Place.
saying how thankful we are to have the incredible business organizations, the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance, the Sarasota and Manatee County Chambers, and the EDCs. Your guys' hard work is incredible and it means the world to me and our entire team. That being said, we're thrilled and honored to accept the award from the Lakewood Ranch Business Alliance. And we're excited to show you a little sneak peek of the amazing and outstanding progress done by the Will Smith Construction Team. Smith is doing an incredible job and our timelines have not been impacted to date, which is great because I know our community can't wait for another amazing gathering place. A place for businesses to thrive and families and friends to build lasting relationships. Waterside Place will elevate the entire community and increase the quality of life for this whole region. For businesses looking for more information, please feel free to contact me. I'm available to schedule virtual tours, FaceTimes, Google Hangouts, simple phone calls, and I want to be a resource for you and any of your colleagues. And lastly, I urge you or better, challenge you to support local businesses right now. They desperately need it, and it's an opportunity for you to build a lasting relationship. I can't wait to see you all soon, and I hope you enjoy the sneak peek. Again, I want to thank you all for attending um, our economic development uh, week wrap up and, and, and I look forward to having lunch with somebody out there on, on Waterside Place this time next year because uh, I definitely don't want to do it at my house. So um, I hope, hope to see you all out there at some point and enjoy your weekend for those out there that have um, sons and daughters. Uh, happy Mother's Day. <laughs>